Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're doing a video, one might think, on football. But no. This is a card I got in the mail. Uh, this is an eBay purchase. Really nice looking Fran Tarkenton. Um, still sort of wondering why this card got a four. Um, I want to take a quick little look at this card. It has a little bit of dings in the corner. And I guess... So up at the top here, there is appears to be some staining along there. And a little bit of a fold on the corner at the bottom. Uh, centering pretty strong. You know, not great, but strong. You know, it's not off to one side or, or whatnot. But either way, this Fran Tarkenton, PSA 4, card number 400 for the 1975 set. Uh, got this one all in uh, tax, shipping, everything else for $14.10. So I was happy to pick that up. But that's not what today's video is about. As a lot of you know, I did a video recently on the 1971 Topps baseball set. And... Um, it got very well received. It's one of those sets that is just crazy popular uh, as far as the 70s go. The black border make it so ridiculously difficult um, and uh, to get it in any type of high grade. Um, it makes it a very sought after set. There's high numbers that make it a more difficult set. It's not by mistake that the only three sets I don't have from 1970 to today from Tops is 70, 71, and 72. I'm close on all of them, but nevertheless. So what we're going to do today is I had a viewer of the channel reach out and ask for the list of the 40 some odd cards that I needed, and I think it was 49 cards, and he had 10 of them. Uh, this viewer of the channel, um, we had already done a deal. I have that video already kind of in the can on that, um, you know, buying that little collection. It was actually a pretty sizable collection. I bought from him of some other cards. Uh, but he reached out to me again and he says, listen, I have some 71s and, uh, get me the list and we'll, we'll look at it. He did. And he got me these 1971s. Now I lamented in the video, uh, of the 1971 set that, um, he, that I was in kind of dire straits because even though I only needed 49 cards, a lot of them were better players. So we'll start off with this John O'Donohue. This one is a high number, 743. And, you know, he sent this along. And what I did was he sent the cards along. We had already had uh, established a rapport uh, from the purchase of the other collection, uh, which was primarily 1970 and other vintage. Um, so we had established a rapport. He sent the cards along. We talked. He sent the cards along. And I told him, you know, we'd look at the comps. And he said the same thing. And uh, that's what we did. So basically what I did was I kind of tried to reference, um, you know, since this was individual cards, the comps on these cards uh, because it's only 10 cards, right? I mean, I'm not going to treat it like a lot. It's not. These are some better name players and some high numbers. So I comped the cards out. And when I told him what I could pay him for it, uh, he's he was like, yeah, that's kind of right where I was at. So it worked out. So all I got to do is, is fire him a check um, back. So... This John O'Donohue, obviously it's spotted, it's off-center, but it's 
as far as I'm concerned, this card is fairly strong in that the corners are sharp-ish. You're not going to find 1971s in crazy, ridiculous shape. I mean, you might find a handful here and there. But even in the slot, there were some. So John O'Donohue. Then this one, very nice card. Mike Marshall. Uh, it looks like it's miscut. It looks like there's some edging there of another card. But as far as corners and edges and that sort of thing go, uh, pretty strong. I mean, it has some white there at the bottom, some white at the top. But this is very easily an EX type card, if not for the miscut. Um, but that's kind of how I treated it. And I sort of looked at other cards like that. And it's a high number, so 713. Um, that's Mike Marshall. So two Expos. And then we had Jim Stewart. This is more of a VG card um, because of the, you know, the, the, the damage up here. Uh, predominantly a little bit of tipped corners all around, but that hit there was probably like the biggest thing. So this is card number 644, and that fills another hole in my set. Uh, 1971 Leo DeRocha manager card. A nice card, strong, uh, obviously badly off center, uh, but uh, overall, for 1971, not bad. No real issues on this card, you know, that stick out. So I was really pleased to add this one to my set. When I called him, uh, or actually sent him the email back, at first we talked on the phone, and then he said I was going to send the cards. And um, and then we, when I sent him the email back, I, you know, I was a little nervous whether the cards were going to, you know, fit my set. Uh, but they didn't. They were great. They were great. This one is the probably the lone exception, this Bobby Mercer. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's bubbling there at the bottom. So uh, otherwise, it would be very strong card, uh, but that bubbling really uh, sort of impacts this card and probably its value. Uh, card 635 Bobby Mercer so that's a, a filler until I can find something a little bit better preferably without the bubbling and there also seems to be a little bit of an issue on his face so there were some gouges there that sort of happened over time probably because of waxing so there was waxing so I took all of that into consideration uh, when I looked at this card and I sort of treated it as a good or, or fair or poor, or however people want to sort of... I treated this as a low-grade card, and you can pick up a Bobby Mercer in low-grade for $3. So that's kind of where we were at on that card. Uh, this one was nice. The Mad Hungarian, Al Habrowski, uh rookie card. I believe this is his rookie. Uh, I don't know if he has one in 1970. I don't think so. So the Mad Hungarian Al Habrowski. Uh, and this is a nicely conditioned card. I mean, it's got, you know, damage there, a little bit of damage there, a little bit of tipped corners. But overall, it really fits, in general, the condition of my set. And if I pick up an Al Habrowski that's in better condition along the way or better centered or whatever, that's great. I'll be able to sell this one for what I paid for it. So I'm, I'm 100% good with that. So now the 1971 set is down to 39 cards and still some biggies, but here are some biggies that got knocked off the list. Lou Brock. So there's some damage there. And there, right? So this is like a, it's like a fold almost a little, but strong VG card for Lou Brock. And it was one of those cards in the higher numbers, uh, semi highs and highs that, you know, had um, 
had me worried in terms of where am I going to pick up all these high numbers and how much am I going to pay for them? Uh, you know, typically I don't pay as much as I paid for these cards. I would sort of try to pick up lots and see if I can score a Lou Brock in, in medium grade, you know, for a dollar because that's how the lot breaks down. You know what I mean? But to get all these cards in one felt swoop and get them knocked off the list, well, I'll pay for that. I'll pay for that. And and let's face it, these cards will always be worth what I paid for them. So if I find a better conditioned one along the way, then so be it. Uh, again, I'll be able to sell these cards for around what I paid for it. So I'm good with that. Uh, this one was probably one of the nicer cards again it's first of all i'm a big huge Yaz fan i'm a huge boston red sox fan but particularly Yaz. and as anybody who knows this channel has watched this channel for a little while now knows you know besides Yaz, probably my next favorite red sox was dwight evans and of course in the modern era is david ortiz but this is a uh, great looking card. I mean, it has some issues top right hand corner there, but other than that, it's strong. And then of course, you know, it's it's off center. I mean, it's it's you know, badly off center, right? I mean, this is almost to the edge. There's very little black border there, but strong looking card and I'd be very pleased to add this to my set card number 530. Yes. I'm, I, I'm going to be honest. I was astonished when I went through my 1971 binder and, and realized I did not own a Yaz card from 1971. I mean, I have Yaz's rookie. I have a bunch of Yaz cards from the 60s. And it was really kind of took me aback a little bit that I just hadn't, hop, I hadn't stumbled upon Yaz's uh, 1971. But now it is in the collection. Uh, the next one, Steve Garvey rookie, and this is definitely VG, G to VG probably, but uh, it's a strong, good, um, borderline, very good. Depends on how you sort of grade um, these cards, but I like it uh, for Steve Garvey rookie. You know, this is a strong card, card 341. And now it's in the collection. And, you know, I can always sell this. Steve Garvey rookie wouldn't have any problem selling if I happen to uh, stumble upon a better conditioned uh, Steve Garvey. So I was also kind of a little taken aback that I didn't have this particular card when I went through. But, you know, I didn't. So this is good. Now I have them next year's top tens will start to look a little bit different as I pick up more and more cards. And then finally, finally, um, Thurman Munson. And this is a pretty strong card. I mean, again, it has sort of the, the issues that a lot of these cards had the centering issue, but that's a tops problem. You know what I mean? Tops needs to answer for that. They should put the executives of tops under the hot white lamps and ask him what in the bejesus were you guys doing uh, in quality control. But overall, the card's pretty sound. It's got, you know, a dinged corner there, a tipped corner there, another tipped corner there, you know, some edge, some edge issues. But I'd say this is easily a strong, you know, a VG card. You know, very easily a VG card. <clears throat> That's just how I, I grade it in my mind. So a very strong Thurman Munson. Uh, and that one is off the list. So now I believe I have every card beef up to card 399. Uh, card 400 Hank Aaron uh, is still missing. I think it's card 400 Hank Aaron is missing. But... This is a second year Thurman Munson, but it gets a lot of love in the hobby because uh, 
it's the first card where he's by himself. Technically, he's not by himself. He's throwing somebody out here. But, or maybe he's not. Maybe he's, the guy is sliding in safe because I've heard the ball is somewhere else. But, you know, Thurman Munson, not a Hall of Famer, but, a, uh, you know, as far as Yankees lore goes, uh, Thurman Munson certainly uh, was on par with the better catchers of uh, his generation. Uh, he was probably... <sighs> I'm going to say the third best catcher-ish of that generation in the American... in in, in the in the majors. Probably uh, Johnny Bench, Carlton Fisk, and Thurman Munson. You know what I mean? Um, but some I've heard some stories about Thurman Munson. Thurman Munson, for example, once got upset that uh, the Red Sox were running on him in a game where they knew his shoulder was sore. To which I say, so what? If you can't play, you shouldn't be in the lineup. Um, but Thurman Munson sort of felt that that was an unwritten rule, I guess. Um, but anyway, this card, very glad to add it to the collection, uh, and to that set. It's strong. Uh, it was probably the most expensive card in this particular lot because this card does get a lot of love in the hobby. So when I did the comps, uh, the numbers bear it out. This one was just in raw condition selling for more than all of those other cards that I showed you. So basically just to give you guys an idea, if you have cards that you're interested in selling duplicates, that sort of thing, or a collection or whatever, you can always reach out to me in my email. I usually include it in the, the links in the description below. Um, if you're interested in how I sort of purchase individual cards like this, that's what I do. I'm going to take the 10 last sales. So for example, let's use the Thurman Munson. The Thurman Munson looks like a VG card. Uh, I look at the 10 last sales of cards that to me look VG or in similar condition to this Munson. I write those prices down and then I divide by 10. And that gives you a rough idea of what people are paying. You say, well, do you throw out the high number and the low number? Well, it doesn't really matter because there usually is a high number and there usually is a low number. And they're going to sort of wash out anyway um, with the other numbers that are closer to what the card sells for. And that's how I do it. It's that simple. It's nothing more fancy than that. Um, and then I make the offer and if people are willing to, to accept that offer, great. And if they're not, that's great too. And I'll ship them the cards back. I have no problem with that. Uh, love. I love this. This is one of the main reasons I started the channel to make purchases, to meet the collectors, to talk about cards with the collectors, uh, to send that kind of transactions back and forth. Um, I'm a straight shooter. So uh, if I say I'm going to buy cards and I'm going to offer you X amount, I'm going to, I'm going to send you that. I'm going to send you that. And if, and it, you know, that's the way I roll. I don't, I don't play around like that. So, um, because I know what it would be like if to be scammed and all of that other stuff. So, uh, I sell on eBay and I can tell you that sometimes you really do think you're being scammed. Um, but I will say this as an eBay seller, these, for the most part, the buyers on eBay in the lane that I sell cards in, which is typically vintage or early 80s stuff, those people are straight shooters too, for the most part. And they're not, I, I haven't had a lot of bad experience selling on eBay. I've had them for sure, but, uh, but I haven't had a lot of them because those folks really, they just want a card. They want to pay you for that card and that's it. 
that's how they roll. You know what I mean? So where I've run into trouble, I hate to say it, is when I sell cards that are more modern. And quite honestly, to basketball collectors, uh, I seem to run into so far, and this is totally anecdotal. Um, I've had more trouble uh, with issues of being scammed uh, by people who are collecting modern basketball. And uh, that's why when I sell a modern basketball card, I add $395 or $495 shipping because I want to know it got there. And I try to do economy shipping on most of my individual cards, unless they're big dollar cards for my protection and for your protection. Um, and one of the main reasons is because um, I want to make sure that that card got there. Same with the basketball cards. I want to make sure that they got there uh, so that there's no issue or, or uh, any nobody can claim that it did not get there, uh, et cetera. Well, I've rambled on long enough. Want to thank you guys all for subscribing. Um, let me know what you think of the cards. Um, which one is your favorite? Um, I'm down to 39 cards in that 1971 set, man, and I'm stoked. I want to thank all the new subscribers, all the subscribers who've been with me since the beginning. I started this thing in kind of, I want to say, August of, of this past year, and I've had a lot of fun doing it. And I'll, if you continue watching, I'll keep making them. I really do enjoy it. And um, as always, guys, happy hunting. Thanks.